The year was 1980, as Iowa's Ambassadors of Music suited up for yet another memorable summer. However, this season would go down in history as the Colts introduced one of the most legendary trumpet soloists to the world. It was this unmistakable sound, that the unmistakable sound of his bugle. I always had my buddies to knock me down a notch if I ever thought I was getting out of hands. He never ever missed the solo. He was rock solid, a crowd favorite. It uh, people would go see the Colts just because, just for the solos. It uh, came to be an identifiable piece both for the Colts and for me, and we ended up doing that, that arrangement in 1980, 1981, and in 1982. If you mention Harpo, if they're in my era from back in the day, they'll, oh, they will have a story, or they'll say summertime, or they'll instantly know who that is, of course, nicknames being everything in drum corps. Uh, so it's an unmistakable tone quality, unmistakable sound, and he just owned the stadium and owned that song when he played. And I got to hear it again tonight. We got the summertime music in the block before dinner, before our little meeting. Um, so, trunked through it, um, repped it a few times, and that was really cool. We actually listened to a recording of the Colts playing it, which I thought was really cool. And I like following along in parts. I was like, oh yeah, there's, there's that cool little, cool little groove part there. Um, and it's really cool, summertime is a big, standard for us um, and being able to play with Harpo at our little meeting after dinner was uh, something really cool. You get to sort of step back in time a little bit and um, it, it's a weird to explain. Um, you take the place of those who were actually there for that show but at the same time it's still the Colts. Like this is still the same organization as it was uh, and the fact that Harpo was there just kind of made everything full circle. It's like, it just, it just felt right. Well, I got involved with the Colts uh, on a spring evening in 1976, and he asked me if I ever thought about joining the Drum and Bugle Corps. And I said, well, no. And he says, well, we have practice at the Frank Harley Building on Sunday afternoons. Would you like to join us? I did, and, and I marched for seven years. After I aged out, I taught the Corps for two years while I was finishing college. In my second year on the staff, uh, I ran into a gentleman whose son was marching in the Corps, and he uh, he asked me if I was if I had a job lined up yet, and I said no, I don't have a job lined up yet. And he says, well, why don't you why don't you come in for an interview? We may have a spot for you, and uh, it's the same job that I have today. Harpo then explained one of the most unique and important pieces of the cult experience is the family atmosphere. You, you live together, you work together, you, you, know, you laugh together, you cry together. The thing is these people become your extended family. The guys that I was riding the bus with in 1976 are the guys that uh, I go on vacation with up at Wisconsin Dells every year. Harpo also explained the many life lessons that the drum corps activity teaches students. That nothing good comes without effort. I also think it, it shows kids what can happen when you dedicate yourself to a task and do the very best you can to get that task done. A good thing for kids. It does great things for kids and that's why I'm still involved. That excellence is demanded and excellence is expected and there's very few other things that you do in your life where perfection is, is expected. For UNITV, this is Isaac Campbell.